Hello everybody, my name is Todd Mendenhall, and the last time I competed in BattleBots was 16 years ago in 2003. I have a new design for a robot in my head and I'd like to make it a reality. In addition, I'm not sure everybody understands what goes in to the end-to-end -end manufacturing of a BattleBot. So I want to make a series of videos on the design, the construction, and the competition of the mechanical, electrical, and software portions of a robot. I found this video from 13 years ago, and it reminded me what was the impetus of the omnidirectional drive. I was still working in aerospace, but most of the people I worked with knew I did a lot of works in robotics. So I was approached by a guy who said that he had an idea for designing a firearms training facility for the military, and he wanted to put the targets on mobile bases. Now his experience was just with four-wheel drive skid steer robots, and he knew that the four-wheel drive skid steer robots weren't very natural in their motion. And what he wanted me to look at is how I might change a design so that the base could move in a more human or more natural way. So I threw together this simulation, which is pretty archaic and uh, pretty simplistic. And we talked through a number of opportunities and things that might be easily changed. And that was where it all started. Now, of course, like 99% of the things in this type of environment, it never really came to anything, but it got me thinking. This is gonna be a pretty simplistic explanation about planar motion. If you're in a plane and you're a rigid body, there's only three degrees of freedom associated with movement. That's movement in the X direction, movement in the Y, and rotation about Z. Now if we examine this in terms of a basic four-wheel drive skid steer design, obviously X motion is pretty easy. Y motion is, uh, thanks for playing, but just not possible. Rotation about Z requires differential drive. So one side driven forward, one side driven back. And the motion at each tire is going to end up being partial driven motion and partial sliding motion. That means you're going to consume more power and how much more power depends on your level of traction but it's not simple in terms of easy to predict how it's going to behave. As an example, what happens if your lower left wheel is off the floor? It could be off the floor, right, that the floor is not flat. It could be that your frame is a little twisted. And it could also be that there are particles on the floor, say, ground up rubber from tires and the traction is different in the different locations. In any case, for this instance, the forward mo motion on the right is not quite countered by the backwards motion on the left and you're going to end up getting a combination of rotation and translation in X. So there uh, the four-wheel drive is the simplest design, is probably the strongest design in terms of, of functionality related to complexity and the actual load it can take, but it certainly has some flaws. In addition to this motion, the basic motions I'm talking about, there are also combination motions. What happens if you want to go, for instance, forward and rotate at the same time? Anytime you have a combination of motions, they can be broken down into, if you have any form of 
of motion, translation motion and rotation, that can be broken down into pivot at a fixed point on the robot, or in some cases you can talk about a pivot a fixed point location on the floor. So in this case, what happens if you want to do both a translation and a rotation at the same time? What you're going to find is in the four-wheel drive robot, it's very difficult to have precise combinations of motion. And as soon as you start having differential ground traction, it's going to become virtually impossible. Enter the Mechanum wheel. I've been very interested in these for quite a long period of time. Uh, they have some advantages and some disadvantages. I noticed some, I think the recent robot uh, Shatter uses these. Uh, I believe that's the case. Uh, and they, they show some very interesting motion in the battle box. One way that this functions, I'm going to assume a 45 degree uh, release degree of freedom on each wheel. That's not always the case on Mechanum wheels, but for now, just to, to show how they work, uh, each wheel, for instance, wheel one here, it has a driven motion forward and back, and it has a release degree of freedom in the 45 degree, degree direction, which means if you take wheel one and you try and move it, physically try and move it along that green arrow, it will slide without any resistance. And combination-wise, two, three, and four are designed so that, that no single motion of the robot is allowed with those release degrees of freedom. In other words, there's no really soft way that, that you can just roll the robot because the mechanum wheels are there. So, X motion obviously is the same as before. Y motion, you can see if we look at wheel one, if you drive wheel one forward a certain velocity, the release degree of freedom allows it to go into pure Y motion because the moving, the driven velocity is combined with the release degree of freedom and that's a possibility. You can end up anywhere along the green arrow but uh, in the case what you're doing when you drive the other wheels is you're driving, you end up with a combination of things that can only be solved in a certain way. So Wheel 2 now drives backward. Its release degree of freedom allows it to go into pure Y no motion. Wheel 3, again, they're, the release degrees of freedom and their driven directions are different, but the net result is the only solution for a rigid body is motion along the Y. That's pretty cool. Rotation, the actual physical motion of rotation looks like the four-wheel drive uh, skid steering in that one side is driven forward, the other side is driven back. The difference is that instead of sliding, the release degrees of freedom will allow those embedded wheels to roll and you get the motion that you need for pure rotation without having drag on the ground. So the mechanum wheel turning is more efficient than the four-wheel drive skid steer. Com if you want to do combination directions, like if you want to not only go in the X direction but go in the X and Y direction, that can be done using mechanum, but there is an issue. In this case, we go back to the situation where wheel number three is off the floor because your your uh, frame is twisted a little or the floor is not level. In which case, notice that 
wheels two and four, their release degrees of freedom are along the pathway you want to go, which means that wheels two and four cannot contribute to force along that direction because their embedded wheels will just roll. So nominally, if wheels one and three were on the ground, both on the ground, you could get two of them contributing. But if wheel three just happens to be off the ground, you would have only a single wheel, wheel one, contributing uh, force along the XY direction. That just happens to be a weakness of mechanum wheels. And this is shown at 45 degrees. There are other wheel configurations that would be different. So what happens if you have independent wheel steering? Right, Four wheels, independent steering. You can move them wherever you want. Obviously, X is not a problem. Obviously, Y is not a problem. And pure rotation is not a problem either. And if one wheel comes off the floor, it doesn't matter because the three other wheels are perfectly oriented to give rotation. Now, the biggest strength of the steerable wheel design is the ability to set an arbitrary pivot pivot point. And that means that if you want to do a combination of X motion and rotation, X motion, Y rotation and rotation, your system can uh, provide traction for all those without any slipping. The bottom line, the big negative, and the reason nobody's ever done this for BattleBots that I know of, is it's complex. Can you make it strong enough to withstand the impacts of a, uh, a big strike by a, a vertical or horizontal spinner? And if you can, can you get it in under the weight budget? That's what I'm trying to undertake. I don't know the answer, but I'm going to try. Let's be realistic here. This is not the right way to make an immediately competitive battle bot. It's way too complicated. If you want to make something that's competitive, you need to make something simple and brutal. Otherwise, like me, you're going to have to spend at least three seasons making it reliable. If I can do that, I can make a system that moves in original ways. I can make attachments that are unique. I can have something that I really want to field. I'm willing to sit on the bottom of the ladder for an extended period of time, waiting until I'm competitive.